Okay, so hi everyone. As you can see, today the setting is a little bit different. And uh, because I have a special guest with me today, and if you click into this video, then you probably, you're going to take Muet very, very soon. So today my friend and I will be giving you some tips about Muet. Yeah, so uh, wait, if you're new here, I'll introduce myself first. I'm Chi Wei and I'm a first year medical student in the National University of Malaysia. And I got a band five in Muet. Okay, so special guest. Drum roll, please. Hi, hello, YouTube community. This is my first time here. Thanks, Chiwi, for having me. Uh, hi, guys. My name is uh, Jin Lok. I'm a soon to be first year medical student at uh, University of Malaya. I previously studied at College Metropolitan Johor. And uh, by the grace of God, I was able to get band six for wet during metrics last year, this year. Hi, guys. Yeah, and, and, and it's really like I'm really lucky that like Jin Lok agreed to join me in this video because he's the first human being that like an actual human being who got banned six. I've never seen anyone. <laughs> so it's like Whoa. No, I'm very I'm very honored to be here actually. Very happy. You're the uh, you're thanks, the only matriculation me. student who got banned six, right, for this year, like 2020 slash 2021, is it? Uh no, actually there are there, there um before the remarks, there were two students, matriculation students who got banned six. Uh, one from KMJ, which is me, and then the other one from KMPK. Ooh. I'm not sure about uh, who got uh, Band 6 after the remarks, though. Rest rest pieces. Okay, okay. So, yeah, so hopefully, right, today you guys will get something out of this video. Lah, and uh, since we gone through Muet before, I think we all can give you all some useful tips. Okay, so Jin Lok, do you want to tell us a little bit about what is Muet? Uh, yeah, sure. So MUET is basically an English language proficiency test. It's the Malaysian version of IELTS and TOEFLs. So MUET is like the general exam, which is separated into four parts. You have writing, reading, speaking, and listening. Back then during our format, uh, we used to emphasize a lot on reading because that's where a lot of our marks are. But this, uh, this year, starting from this year, 2021, y'all will be having a new format where writing, reading, speaking, and listening will uh, each have the same mark allocation, uh, which is 25% each. So yeah, your mark allocation will basically equal to your band. The higher your marks, once, you, once, once your marks pass a certain like a benchmark, then you'll be awarded uh, bands according to your marks. It's uh, quite different from our SPM uh, English paper. Like, what is a completely, uh, like, another ball game. It's, like, not the same at all. So, yeah, later we'll tell you guys more about it. Lah. I agree. Like, it's just, if you get A in SPM, Muet is different, okay? You have to, like, start from zero. Okay, so True. I think let's move on to the first part. So, we will be going through, like, uh, writing, reading, speaking, and listening. Uh, and we will just tell you what we think would be helpful, okay? So, for my part, I'll talk about... Uh, Writing, so we will have two tasks in writing. So the first part will be like the formal writing, either a report, letters, or emails. So during my year, we were practicing for report, right? right? Report, writing. Mm. And then the second part yes, is yes. Uh, an argumentative essay or like uh, problem solving or discursive. So uh, the second part is where you will take uh, more time to do. Okay, so I'll just yes. tell you all that uh, some people actually prefer to do the argumentative essay first. They will do task two before doing task one because, you know, the other part has more marks, right? So it yes. depends on you actually. But during my time, I, I, actually, I actually did task two first. And then I didn't have enough, have enough time to do task one, you know? So, so no. I would recommend you all to like, you have to like figure it out yourself. I, I wouldn't say you have to do task two first, but you, you have to see how you, um, how you can do it, okay? Okay, so the, to the more technical part is that I would suggest you all to have a variety of sentence structure and I'll probably lay out a few examples on screen later and then practice with past year questions. So, you know, like for report writing, right, we have a lot of um, uh, example questions and then you have to practice all. So I think practicing is very important. You have to practice and then after you practice, sh show it to your lecturer and let them mark, right? You know, in college, like your lecturers, they are not spoon feeding you. You have to very, be very, very proactive, okay? Maybe, right? See, Jin Lok, he's like. Because I, I really agree. Because 
um, you know, you, it's really all your own initiative. You can't rely on the lecturer to carry you to the high band. It's, it all depends on you. So what yeah. Shui said is so true. Yeah. So like maybe like my lecturer, right? She don't give us a lot of exercise. Right? She would maybe give us one or two. So it depends on the students themselves to actually do more and let your teacher check more. Right, so some of my friends, they actually just, they don't like take the initiative to do more practice. Lah. So for me, I actually did more and then I will go to the office and uh, like, hey, teacher, can you help me check? Yeah, so that is... For, for real, and then your English lecturer did, did take out the time to help you mark it. Yeah, for report, for report, I think. She actually, she actually let us, like, she's like, okay, so this time I'm free. If any of you want to come and let me see your work, then you can come. Lah. So that, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. Cause like, was it you know, for back, you? back then, so like for me, right? Back then, uh, I didn't, I didn't get the chance lah, to do report writing, uh, physically, and then ask my, I asked my lecturer for her feedback because she taught us report writing quite late. Uh, like it was like after our sem one mid sem break, so uh, we were not exposed to it very early. So I did do extra, uh, but and I did send to my teacher ask for feedback, but. Uh, and actually, until now, I haven't gotten the her feedback. So, uh, guys, you have to understand that uh, some of your, if some, if not most, uh, of your English lecturers will be very busy, uh, busy with uh and all that, with seminars and courses to attend. So, in the event that you cannot find your lecturer to give feedback, you can uh, perhaps ask your friends who are very good in English to. Uh, give a few opinions uh, on your uh, writing, on your grammar, on your, the use of your language. Yeah, that would really help a lot. Yeah, I think that, yeah, yeah. ask friends. Yeah, your friends are ask always friends. there for you. Yeah. True, true. Okay, and then I think after, actually, actually, if my lecturer, right, because last time they didn't really emphasize on essay, right? They want us to reading, reading, reading. So I, she only actually helped me check for report. Lah, and for the, the task two part, the argumentative essay, Actually, I think like like I didn't really do much practice, uh, which I think if I did more, right, I could probably do like score better. So, so how do you prepare for like argumentative essay? Um actually uh for argumentative essay, because back then uh during my SPM years, I was already used to writing like factual argumentative essays. I usually don't write uh the stories or like uh like poems or like giving you one sentence, one quote, and then asking you to elaborate on that. I usually don't write those because my, my English uh, teacher back then straight away told us that don't write those. If you write those, I will give you lower marks. So none of us like in our class like wrote those, which is, I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. But anyways, uh, so I was quite uh, used to writing argumentative and factual essays. Uh, I would suggest you guys to go watch uh, 2020 KMNS virtual MET MET coaching seminar. That's what uh, I did last year. And then I feel like I really learned a lot like, in terms of how to structure my paragraphs, my points, my uh, my hurayan, my elaboration and all into like uh, a decent essay. So maybe we can link that down below. Like, yeah, yeah. So like, you guys can like, take a look. But of course, yeah, like, you know, the format is changing uh, for you guys. So. Yeah, but then again, writing is like, you know, it's like, yeah. General, right? Oh, it's on YouTube, is it, the video? Yeah, it's on oh, okay, YouTube. Then, it's then... by Kim and that's that. Yeah. Hey, I should, I didn't watch it though. Oh, sorry. <laughs> never mind. Oh, I missed it out. Oh, that's okay. Okay, okay, it's okay, it's okay. Okay. Still so, we'll, we'll, we'll link it down below, lah, okay? So, yeah. for, so for factual essays, just that you just make sure that you have to back up your, all your points with facts. Huh? I think that would add a lot of marks for you and pay attention to grammar. Don't make those simple mistakes because when they, when they uh, allocate you like, for marks, right, they actually have this criteria, right? Like, whereby, like, uh, grammar, okay, uh, a lot yeah. of mistakes. And then, yeah, it, it will affect you, affect your marks um, quite uh, quite a lot yeah so make quite sure that lot. your grammar take care of your grammar and if you think that your English is your sentence structure you don't really know much then just don't risk it yeah make sure yeah. your grammar is good first yeah, yeah. that's what I would one say more thing to add. Oh. yeah one more thing to add here I also advise uh, you guys to not write long complex sentences because uh, if possible 
if, if let's say you have like one point, uh, like two points, and then you want to like string it up together into one beautiful, complex, uh, you know, very like neat looking sentence, uh, I advise you to not, if your level of English, your command of the of grammar is not up uh, on par with that level yet. Because like, you know, sometimes it might, you know, end up biting us back in the end. So if possible, break up your sentences into uh, like simpler structures. Uh, that would be easier for you all. Okay, so I think now we can move on to reading. Yeah, okay. So uh, reading is basically 50, uh, if not mistaken, right, 50 multiple choice questions. So uh, you'll be given like, if not mistaken, six to seven uh, long text uh, or excerpts uh, from articles or whatnot. Uh, and basically one, one paragraph, uh, seven questions will be based on that long text. So, uh, and then you have to do 50 questions. It's just like your uh, Sajara paper one back then, except, except there are 10 more questions. So uh, for that, right. Um, the, the hard thing about reading from wet is that sometimes the text uh, uses very deep, uh, language, very complex words. Sometimes when I read them, I also, what are they talking about? Uh, it's not only uh, the fact that they, they use a lot of like big bombastic words. Sometimes they, they use a lot of metaphors and then literary devices, which may confuse like, a lot of us. So uh, there's nothing uh, we can do about it, except but to prepare ourselves, like, you know, do more past year questions and do a lot more reading and practice. The questions are can be very tricky. The choices A, B, C, D. Usually, uh, usually like not 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 all four will be like similar to each other. Like maybe like A and B or B and C will be like so similar to one another to the point that you feel like uh, either one can do. So either one can like answer the question. So you have to get used to the formula because your point of understanding may not be the schema Japan's uh, point of view. Uh, how how uh, how you understand the text will influence how you choose your questions. So um, that will be up to you guys to, you know, you know to decipher to, based on your own understanding, to answer. So more practice, really, just more practice. Uh, another advice would be to briefly read through the questions first so that you can get an idea of what the text is about and you know what answer you're looking for. I think, uh, Chiwi, you did this right. You uh, look through the questions first before you read the text. Yeah, yeah right. I, I skim through first. So like you know what to catch. Right? When you read, then you know, okay, the answer is somewhere around here. Yeah, so it yeah, saves yeah. time in a way also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, even my English lecture also uh, recommended that. But uh, I usually don't do that because uh, I actually, I, I, I very much enjoy like reading the long text. Right? Because, like, sometimes it's very meaningful. It's very informative. So I don't read the questions first. I just enjoy the, the, you know, the reading first. And then I very look at the questions because uh, when I'm reading and actually enjoying it, I, I, I sort of do remember it. Lot. So like, when the questions ask uh, about a specific uh, information in some paragraph, I, I do remember because like, I, I quite enjoy reading it. But uh, I uh, definitely recommend you guys to read the questions first so that you have a brief idea on what the paragraph is about and what the questions want you to answer, All right? Uh, you can bring highlight, uh, highlights, uh, marker, or like, you know, your color pencils, uh, uh, color pens. I'm, I'm pretty sure no one is gonna bring color pencils inside the <laughs> examination hall. Your color pens, uh, markers, highlighters, and all into the, into the examination hall. So yeah, feel free to utilize that to highlight uh, important points. Okay, now let's move on to speaking. And yep. for speaking, I know a lot of you are very scared of this because you're like, oh no, speaking, like what should I do? I don't have a very good command on the language. But uh, just don't worry, listen to our tips first. And if you apply it, I'm sure you'll do just fine, okay? So in yep. speaking, there will be two parts. So it will be individual presentation and then going on to group discussion. Right, okay, so... Uh, for individual presentation, I think they will give you two minutes and you will have, uh, you will, you will have time to prepare your points. Right? You will have, be given a paper and a pen and you can prepare your points before you present. And same goes to group discussion. Uh. We have uh, four people, right? Four people in a group. Four and then group. Yeah. A, B, C, D, depending on which candidate you are, you will get a, like a statement, right? So they say, uh, uh, they say, which one is the best activity to bond your neighbors together? And then the first one, Gotong Royong. The second one, uh, 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 
festival celebrations, open house, okay? So all of you have to discuss and uh, give your, your own points, uh, some um, backup, and then kind of like discuss together and count with a conclusion, okay? So there will be like 10 minutes for you to do that, 8 to 10 minutes. Okay, so the first thing that I would recommend you to do is that um, you have to practice brainstorming your points, right? So um, what, why, and how? Right, so if like let's say they give you open house, okay, what is open house? You can just explain it a little bit, like oh, this is uh during festivals, people will just uh open uh, have this uh, open house and people will come in and meet new people and have fun, uh, uh, eat dinner together and what so. And then why? Why does it um help you to create a more friendly and nice um bond with your neighbors and how? So so. Basically, I think with these three things, right, you basically have a lot of things to say already. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Basically, utilize the uh, five W1 hedge, the who, what, where, what, when, why, how. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you'll, you'll, that will help you generate a lot of ideas. Yeah. So you have to uh, go through a lot of like topics because I think more or less, right, all the things they cover is like almost the same one. It's either about yeah, studies. Yeah, yeah, studies, environmental stuff, or they will repeat. So you have yeah. that booklet. Uh, so you just like, if you don't have time, you just read through the answers, uh, I would say. That's what I did. I read through the answers and like have the points in my head and then do some practice. Uh, brainstorm within two minutes. Try to brainstorm your points. Uh, that would help. Yeah. And then I would say if, same, it's the, almost the same thing like your essay, right? Try yeah. to use simple English and get your points straight. Yeah, use simple yes. English. Is it Jin Lok? Yes. Yeah, this is really... Yes. yes, use simple English. Don't try to come up with complex sentences and then you get stuck there. Like, it's not recommended. So as long as you are giving a clear explanation on what you want to say, the examiner un understands you and you have good grammar, you will do fine in speaking. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There is no point in trying to impress the examiner with big bombastic words that seem complicated to you and you don't know how to use like that in the end would like decrease the overall impression so just a slow and steady yeah the race. yeah and uh i will read a bit a few like uh criteria where they see about speaking so giving reasons elaborating evaluating expressing opinions turn taking and concluding so all of this you have to um pay attention now especially um, expressing opinions definitely so in a group right you have to be proactive just try not to wait until someone calls you just speak up okay and when you speak up after that make sure you take turns so you don't be so too dominant but also not too meek as well right yeah. don't, don't be like uh, you, you need people to call you after you say like um, also I think blah 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 okay so Jin what do you think about this uh, you have to yeah, try I think and... you have to strike uh, I think after a lot of practice, you'll be able to strike a perfect balance between, you know, not being too dominant and not being too meek. Uh, balance, uh, just be balanced. Because uh, back then for me, uh, I was a bit too dominant sometimes, I feel. Uh, to the point that, uh, let's say it's like 10 minutes, I would sometimes take three or four minutes, which is like, uh, which I shouldn't do a lot. I should like separate the time, uh, divide it equally, everybody 2.5 minutes, that would be the best. Because you want to show the examiners that you know you're not gonna hog all the points. You're a team player as well who knows how to ask questions and you know direct uh questions uh when needed. So uh yeah la, after practicing more you'll learn how to do it better. No worries. Oh guys so another tip for speaking right if you find yourself uh uh like doing what I did just now or uh, uh 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 wait uh wait uh um, if you find yourself like struggling to connect your sentences or like you need more time to maybe generate uh, the next sentence in your head, please feel free to make good use of connectors such as furthermore, moreover, on that note, on the other hand, next, first, second, third, uh, uh, firstly, secondly, thirdly. Uh, it really helps uh, you, not only you, but also the examiner to pinpoint what are your main points that you want to say uh personally for me it helps me a lot lah, because sometimes i tend to like ramble on and on my elaboration becomes my point sometimes my point is the elaboration so it gives off the impression that uh my points the way that i'm structuring my sentences are not uh so organized but if you, you make good use of the connectors like uh 
the ones I mentioned previously. You know, like you seem more organized to other people, and that you know you're in control, you're confident in using the English language. So yeah, that's another tip you guys can take note of. Yeah, I agree, Junlock. So, uh, make sure that you structure your what you want to say well, right? Organization and make sure it's clear, lah. And uh, yeah. don't say loud. <laughs> the la la me ah, don't say that. Yeah. Yeah, because it's an English language proficiency test. Uh, we want to avoid using Manglish. You know, the words very used to us, like like that law. Cannot I cannot like that law. And try to minimize your uh uh ah uh, eh uh, um or. Uh, you know yeah yeah because it's not really proper english yeah so you really have to kind of like switch the mode uh, and and uh I, all i can say for speaking is practice yeah take all our tips and apply them practice with your teammates if you know your teammates beforehand you all can like back then i before muet i think almost every day my teammates and i right we practice every day together and same, we kind of like same. We we don't want to be like what you said. We don't want to be too dominant or too meek, right? So we kind of already like jiang hao liao ah. Say like okay, I'll go first, and then you go next, blah blah. And yeah, and and you can keep uh, you can wear a watch as well. Yeah, when you go into the exam hall, you can wear a watch and a timer, so you know that you're not going overboard, and you know when to like stop and then let someone else speak, right? So especially for the individual presentation, individual presentation, um. Yeah, you you have to pay attention to time. Yeah, that's that. Yeah. I think that's that's all for speaking. Honestly, yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you have anything? Uh, to then, add? Yeah. Uh, I I just wanna like uh talk more about what Chiwi said just now, which is to just just practice it. Uh, please feel free uh to practice speaking. Uh, feel free to practice speaking English on a regular basis with your friends, lah. Like what I did with my friends was, uh, we uh I think two or three weeks before when. We told each other, okay, we will only converse in English because uh, me and my Chinese uh, friends, we were all, we always talk in Chinese, lah, of course. But then, uh, we committed, lah. But we sort of failed. We felt like uh at the last at the like last week, I think, because like uh, I personally uh <laughs> I find it very hard, lah, to communicate uh without using Chinese because like, we're so used to it. But then again, that uh that just shows us how much we need to practice more in English, lah, make it a norm for us, so that uh will be. Much better prepared for what. Yeah, and that's an and, idea you guys can use. Yeah, yeah, and just don't be shy to use the language. I think as long as you're learning, if people laugh at you, that's their problem, right? At least you're trying to learn, and really, if if you're putting in effort, you'll see the result. So just go out there, just try to speak English. You yeah yeah, yeah. you 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 lose nothing from trying. You know, uh, yeah. It's, you, you, you won't feel ashamed or lose your dignity because you don't have a good command of the language. No, nobody will, uh, nobody, most people won't think like that. Lah. They, they will rather, you know, be impressed by you trying to improve yourself more. So, good luck. Don't give up. Yeah, and trust me, if your friends are like, uh, their English is, you can learn from them. And in a, in a way, I think they would want to help you as well. So just don't be afraid to ask them for help. Like, I, I, I believe they will definitely help you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Come on, juniors, you can do it. Yeah, don't worry about it, okay? Okay, so now let's move on to listening. All right. So the last part will be listening. Again, 25%. So uh, for Aya, we had like 25 questions where we had to uh, listen to an audio tape, several audio tapes. Uh, and then we had to extract answers from the audio tape. So it tests you on uh, your ability to paraphrase and recognize facts from fiction, plus multiple matching questions. So first things first, we would definitely recommend you to scheme through the questions first, because you'll have uh, one or two minutes, one or two minutes to read through the entire paper before the audio is played. So take that time to read through each section and get a rough grasp on what uh, the answers could potentially be. So yeah, take your time to read it uh, thoroughly. But yeah, yeah, okay, so moving on, the audio will sometimes not be clear, so you have to listen very carefully. From, from my experience, I was in a big hall uh, uh, for my listening test. And you know, sometimes uh, the examiners, they will walk around and then you can listen to the footsteps and sometimes they're heavy breathing because it's not, 
it's very quiet. All the uh, all the candidates are very quiet, of course. But then sometimes our lecturers they breathe, and <laughs> so we might miss out uh, on a few like important words. But again, you don't have to worry. Like each audio tape will be played twice. But then it's very unlucky if uh, your lecturer coughs like for the two important like segments that you missed out on. So you have to take note of this, lah. Try to you know peel open your ears very uh, widely to listen to the important facts. Uh, back then, uh, since I was in the big hall, we had a lot of teachers and then we did have this problem. And the audio system was sometimes uh, very, like, uh, it would give out very muffled sounds. Uh, so we weren't sure if we were hearing the words we thought we heard. So, uh, but then again, this all depends on your environment, your surrounding. Uh, generally, the audio will be tested beforehand now, so you don't have to worry too much about this. But, but yeah, try to train your ability to listen to English, all right? All right, the next point would be to practice listening to different accents and learn how to analyze the key points. Not everything uh, inside the audio clip will be important. You just have to, you know, after looking through your, the questions, you know, pinpoint what the answers are and, and listen to the answers only. Because sometimes, let's say, uh, for example, they ask you on the ways to prevent uh, breakout of COVID-19, uh, for example. But then the entire text, uh, it, will con uh, it will consist of what is COVID-19 breakout? Why did it happen? And then the how is, uh, let, let's stay at the end. So you don't have to listen too much uh, to the front part. Just listen to the important part, like ways to prevent it, all right? Uh, I only found this uh, channel after I finished Muet. You guys can like Google this uh, channel, which is IELTS Daily YouTube uh, for both listening and speaking. Like. So basically, IELTS Daily is a YouTube channel where they will post recordings of IELTS candidates with different bands, their presentations, uh, how they got their bands, basically. And then, uh, okay, once they, we, uh, for every video segment, they will have a certified uh, English lecturer, English lecturer or IELTS, uh, you know, uh, grader who will explain to you uh, very clearly why they got the, the, the four allocated, why uh, this is a good performance, why this is not so good, where he or she can improve on. And I personally feel like if only I knew this before when it will help me so much uh, for speaking, not just speaking, uh, speaking and uh, listening and also writing because like it, it helps you uh, connect, it helps you learn a lot of grammar and vocabulary. So yeah, definitely make great use of this channel, guys. I also daily, oh, definitely recommend. So I think yeah. that is for <laughs> listening and, and maybe I can share some of my experience uh, during my listening test. Like yeah. it's true that the yeah. audio is very muffled and actually they replayed it. They are supposed to replay it twice, like twice only, right? Yes. They're gonna, yes. and they, they replayed it like four times because our one had, had issues. So the, the, the audio kept cutting off. So they had to keep replaying. Like, yeah, and it was really frustrating. And one thing that I didn't expect is that the accents. Like, what? Like, I don't even... When I hear it, right, I'm like... Are they speaking English? <laughs> I was thinking to myself. <laughs> yes, please. Oh, yeah. Uh, that leads me to another point, which I always tell my juniors, which is, uh, if you can, please practice listening to different accents. It's understandable for us to be confused like, when they, uh, you know, play audio clips not from Malaysia, the, uh, the people speaking the audio, uh, making the audio clip is not from Malaysia. La. Like, for example, uh, accents that I struggle with a lot uh, are Irish accents, Irish accents. They're speaking English, it's the same language, but they just have such different ways of pronouncing the words and they use such different language from us, from what we normally would. And uh, so, you know, you, you get confused sometimes. So please practice listening to more like, uh, uh, a wide, uh, a wide array, variety of different accents are uh, from the UK to Australian to Singaporean slangs. If you if you have the chance, please like uh, familiarize yourself with it. It'll help you a lot in what speaking, uh, in what listening. Yeah, like it's not the case whereby at first I thought like they would give us audio which is really clear English, so cause they just want you to understand and. So I'm like, are they testing me on listening to accents or listening to English? You know, I was thinking like... I know, what? I know, right? Yeah, they won't really give you those uh, you British accent, American accent that we usually listen to and what we are used to. They will just give you some weird 
I don't know what accents are and yeah, just yeah. just don't be shocked uh, and just try to try to like catch what they're saying. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And another uh, very important thing, uh, not just for listening up, uh, but for all of the parts of web is to don't panic in that time. If you feel like, oh, you can't understand what you're listening to or you have no idea what your next sentence is in your brain and then you're still in the middle of your sentence during speaking, please don't panic. Uh, web not only tests our English proficiency, but it also tests how we are able to deliver, you know, uh, showcase our uh, our skills in that language, in that specific time frame that you have. So please don't panic. If you feel like you need some time, then just take the time to, uh, not too long, uh, maybe take uh, a few seconds to think. Or in the case of listening, right, just, it's okay. Tell yourself, it's okay. Don't panic. Uh, you can listen to it again uh, during the second time that they play the audio clip. It's very important to not panic because once you panic, you'll get stressed out very easily and then you won't perform as well. So take note, have confidence and faith in yourself. Okay, so that wraps up all the tips we have for you for all four parts of Muet. And I would really like to thank Jin Lok again for joining me in this video because I think the tips and advice he gave really adds value to the sharing session. Okay, so both of us really hope that this video is able to help you in your preparation phase of MUET and all the best to you. And if you found this video useful, don't forget to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any future uploads. And speaking about future uploads, uh, if you realise that this video actually ended so abruptly, it's actually because we have not finished our sharing session. Because the video has gotten way too long, I had to cut it to two parts. So stay tuned for the next episode where we will be talking about um, our advice for you, how to tackle the test. We talk about mindset, my favourite topic, mindset. And I also asked Jin Lok, since he's a band 6 achiever, I asked him what he has to say to students who wants to aim high, right? And I'm sure it's going to be a very interesting sharing session, an interesting topic, and it could be motivational. So... Stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next video. Ah, and also, thank you guys so much for 1,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. It means a lot to me and I'm glad that what I'm doing on this platform actually helps so many of you. It's something that I think is very meaningful and I'll keep doing so if I am able to. Yeah, thank you for your support and I'll see you in the next one.